naval port, you expect to see warships, dockyard equipment, and support vessels. The dockyard is alive with the activity of the dockyard mateys who refit and repair the ships. The Queen's Harbor Master pilots and tugs at work, and civilian and military personnel and equipment. With all the activity in the harbor, this group of tradesmen goes almost unnoticed, but their work is vital to the effectiveness of the fleet. In the event of war, they perform vital independent tasks, and every ship is used to having them on call when needed. One of the primary peacetime tasks of the clearance diving trade is to provide support to the fleet for inspection, servicing, and repair of underwater fittings. Because of the abilities of the clearance divers, emergency repairs are also possible, making a ship seaworthy for return to port despite minor damage. Divers can also inspect the ship's hull below the waterline to determine what maintenance or repair is needed. These services to ships are the responsibility of the fleet diving units in Halifax and Esquimalt. Another responsibility of the fleet diving units is the inspection of facilities. When there has been damage or deterioration, the timely inspection by clearance divers can quickly assess the serviceability of these facilities. There are even certain underwater facilities that can only be constructed and maintained by divers, such as seabed installations. Despite the important role clearance divers have as underwater tradesmen for the fleet, the primary function of a clearance diver is the wartime task of underwater mine clearance, recovery, and when necessary, disposal. Because divers are trained in explosive ordnance disposal, EOD, the fleet diving units are also tasked with EOD for their respective geographic regions. The EOD team can be tasked to travel miles within their region to deal with suspected ordnance, in particular, improvised explosive devices. The fleet diving units are also responsible for diver training. This includes training ship's team divers, combat divers, search and rescue technicians, and clearance diving candidates. Two other units manned by clearance divers are HMCS Cormorant, a fleet diving support ship which provides mobile support to the fleet and is also the mothership for SDL-1, a manned deep diving submersible which is used for work at depths greater than divers can reach for jobs such as recovery of lost gear or wreckage, and the experimental diving unit at the Defense and Civil Institute of Environmental Medicine in Toronto. At the experimental unit, Clearance divers push the limits of the human body to determine the effects of exposure to pressure and decompression to develop safer, more reliable diving practices and techniques. Thanks to the work of this team, it is now possible to work safer than ever before. The training of a clearance diver is a complex process because there's such a variety in skills required, clearance divers undergo an intensive nine-month training program before being qualified. Clearance diving is one of the trades in the Canadian Forces that is recruited from serving members. A new recruit cannot become a clearance diver. For candidates that are already qualified, at least QL4 in another trade, and are ship's team divers, combat divers, or search and rescue technicians, there is a remustering process which includes a two-week rigorous preliminary selection course. To be remustered to the clearance diver trade, a candidate must meet all medical, trade, and physical fitness requirements and be recommended by his commanding officer and a diving unit. Once on the course, the clearance diving candidate will find himself part of a small elite group that spends an intense nine months together, learning a variety of skills. The pace of the physical and intellectual rigors of the course and the unusual length can be quite a challenge.
is an emphasis on fitness, which makes this training physically demanding. academic instruction on specialized diving gear, including repair and maintenance, instruction on welding and the use of hand and power tools, salvage and repair techniques, the use of lifting equipment and rigging, instruction in explosives and demolition, and intelligence and mine warfare instruction in the classroom and practical exercises in the field. It's a hot, dry day. We're going to be using electric detonators in addition to training in underwater explosive and ordnance disposal and demolition, clearance divers receive specialized training on the newly designed CCDA, Canadian Clearance Diving Apparatus. This is a rebreathing system which recycles the gas, scrubbing out the carbon dioxide. This eliminates bubbles, making the unit quieter and therefore more effective in mine countermeasure operations. The entire set is non-magnetic, therefore allowing it to be used in search of any type of mine, including influence mines, those susceptible to magnetic detonation. Also instruction in specialized skills like underwater photography, use of handheld sonar, search and rescue operations including submarine rescues, and an emphasis on diving medical skills and emergency procedures. Diving control over. Yeah, this FU3, uh, we have a diving casualty, uh, possible air embolism. Uh, our ETA up to the chamber approximately nine minutes over. This is Diamond Control, roger. We will ready the chamber. Out. FU3, roger out. Because of the inherent danger of working underwater, rigid training and strict obedience is required. This is not an individual sport or profession. This work requires personal dedication of each member, pulling together as a team, because life can hang in the balance of a few seconds. Drills are practiced until they become second nature. In a real life situation similar to this, there would be no time for giving direction. Everyone must know the procedure. He's breathing and he's got a pulse In the chamber. Keep operator, dive the chamber to 165 feet as fast as possible. Dive the chamber 165 feet. On the side, stand by to dive. In the unlikely event of a diving emergency, clearance divers are trained to respond to and treat diving casualties. All clearance divers receive emergency medical response training and training in the operation of the recompression chamber. Subsequent courses teach skills like the use and maintenance of remote-operated vehicles and submersibles. 
This type of sophisticated equipment enables clearance divers to continue to work effectively in situations where depths or hazardous conditions, such as contaminated water, preclude the physical use of a diver. Although, tasks often require the special abilities of a clearance diver. To accomplish these tasks, clearance divers are trained using modern surface-supplied diving equipment, which utilizes a hot water suit to keep the diver warm and a breathing system using a mixture of oxygen and helium, allowing the divers to go to the maximum depth of 100 meters. The breathing mixture, which is controlled on the surface, is supplied by an umbilical. This complex set of hoses supplies the diver's breathing mixture and hot water for the suit and allows for communications with the diver. The umbilical is fed to the diver alongside the cable control stage, which transports the divers to the worksite. Surface supply diving requires a full support team to monitor, regulate, and control the systems and to communicate with and assist the divers. When clearance divers are subjected to the pressures resulting from these depths, they are usually required to undergo controlled decompression in a surface recompression chamber. Standing by to dive. Standing by to dive. This is YDT-11, presently three miles back for an from our anchorage position. Estimated to be at our anchorage position at 1130. Over. As a diver progresses through the ranks, he learns specialized skills and takes on supervisory tasks, including the navigation and seamanship aboard diving tenders. The clearance diver is an integral part of the team that makes his unit effective and a vital part of the resources of the Canadian Navy.